Hello, my name is Shahriyar Shahriyari, and this is a lecture in a series of lectures on introductory linear algebra based on my book, Retrolinear. Uh, the subject of this lecture is again, matrix linear transformations. In the past, we have seen matrix linear transformations in other videos where we used matrices to construct linear transformations from Rn to Rm. In this video, we want to generalize that and use a matrix to find linear transformations from arbitrary vector spaces to arbitrary vector spaces. So uh, let me remind you by what matrix transformations were so far. Um, so A is an M by N matrix with real entries. When you have a matrix like that, you can think of it as, as a collection of entries that are organized in a table, like a collection of numbers organized in a, in a table. You can use linear algebra methods and think of the matrix by, or, or study the matrix by looking at the column space, row space, and null space. Then finally, you can think of the matrix as a linear transformation. And, and the way we have been talking about that is that when you have a matrix A, that automatically defines for you a linear transformation that I've been calling LA, um, a linear transformation that goes from Rn to Rm. The matrix is M by N, it has M rows and N columns, and the linear transformation goes from Rn to Rm. And the definition, the rule for this linear transformation is that you just multiply by the matrix A. So LA of X is A times X. That makes sense because A is M by N, X is going to come from the domain Rn and it's N by one. And when you multiply an M by N matrix by an N by one matrix, you get an M by one matrix a column vector, which is going to be an element of Rm. And what we have shown is that this is always a linear transformation. So this is a way that uh, you can find all uh, are as many linear transformations as you like from Rn to Rm by picking different uh, matrices. What we want to do now, though, is generalize the question and ask, what if we want a linear transformation from V to W where V and W are not Rn and Rm? So um, this time, two vector spaces walk in, a V and a W, and you want to find linear transformations from V to W. Say your day job is to find those linear transformations and your boss every day comes and asks you for such a linear transformation. How could you create a whole bunch of those linear transformations easily? If V and W were Rn and Rm, your job would be really easy. You would use matrices. But now what if they're not matrices? And the key to this is what we have shown in our, our lectures and videos on isomorphisms is that every finite dimensional vector space is is with, uh, over, over the reals where the scalars are reals is isomorphic to some Rn or Rm. And so we will use that, uh, um, that isomorphism to translate things from V to Rn and then back. And, and, and so let's get started. Let me remind you what coordinate maps were. So if V is a finite dimensional vector space and it has a basis, and in, for this purposes, we need the basis to be ordered, meaning that with the order of the elements matters for us. Uh, because uh, if you have a different order, then you'll get a different coordinate map. Um, and if, uh, because it's a basis, if B is a basis, if, if some vector walks in the door, um, you can write it as a linear combination of the vectors. And in fact, you can write it uniquely because, the, um, because it spans, you can write it as a linear combination of those vectors because B spans. And because B is linearly independent, there's only one way to write uh, V as a linear combination of elements of B. Uh, then um, uh, you take those scalars, alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha n, that you use to write V as a linear combination of elements of the basis, and you make a coordinate vector. You make an element of Rn, and that's called the coordinate vector of V with respect to V. Okay, but what's the map? The map, um, the coordinate map, is the function that takes element, element of V and sends it to, to this coordinate vector. So, so you take um, uh, V in V, and you perform this thing, come up with this guy, and that will be your image. That, uh, that n-tuple will be your image. And uh, we proved that this is an isomorphism. Um, you know, what does that mean? That means that it's a linear transformation. It's also one-to-one -one and onto. Um, and that had um, a major consequences. It means that uh, V and Rn are isomorphic. And as far as linear algebra concerned, they are the same vector space. And, and that's what we will want to be using now over and over again. Um, this map T that sends um, the V to the coordinate vector with respect to 
B of V is called the coordinate map of V relative to B. And it's an isomorphism. It, and because it's an isomorphism and, and, and it's one to one or on two, um, it has an inverse. And the inverse is also an isomorphism. So not only you can go from a vector space to, to coordinates, if you have the coordinates, you, you can pick, figure out what the vector is. Um, as you would do with coordinates in, in, in the plane or in, in three space also. Okay, so, so now here's our setup. Uh, we want to generalize our, our, our linear uh, transformation that comes from matrices. So what I have walks through the door, a vector space V, another vector space W, the dimension of V is N, dimension of W is M. And what I want is a linear transformation from V to W. And I'm given a matrix. So, so, so again, this is a matrix transformation. So I'm just so I'm given an M by N matrix, um, and from that I want to find this linear transformation from V to W. Just like when we went from R N to R M, M by M, M, by N matrix, um, the number of columns um, has to do with the dimension of the domain. The number of the, the number of rows has to do with the dimension of the codomain. So that's what I want. So how am I going to do that? Well, multiplying by A gives a linear transformation from Rn to Rm. That's the thing we just talked about. The, the, and and uh, we used to call it LA. LA was the linear transformation that came from A. Because I, I want to call this new linear transformation, the one from V to W LA, I'm going to call um, the more generic, the more now uh, run-of-the-mill uh, linear transformation that just goes from Rn to Rm that you get from A, I'm just going to call that A. So um, instead of saying La of x is A times x, I will just say A times x is A times x. A of x is A times x. That's what A does. A just sends things over. I'm going to now just be thinking of A as a linear transformation from now on. But then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use coordinate maps to translate between V and Rn and between W and Rm. And that will um, allow me to have a map from V to W. And I can, um, uh, but to do this, to have a coordinate map, you have to specify ordered bases for V and W. And you have to fix those bases. If you, if you change your bases along the way, then you lose track of what you're doing. You've got to have a fixed basis for the vector space V and a fixed basis for a vector space W. If you have that, then from that matrix, you can get a linear transformation from V to W. And, and this um, little visual will help us with that. Um, so this is what I want. I want a linear transformation from V to W that I'm going to call LA, the linear transformation that comes from A. But I don't know how to do that. What I do know how to do is to go from Rn to Rm using A. Again, this was the linear transformation that we were used to calling LA. I'm just calling it A just so that not to confuse it with LA. You could call it LA if you want to also and call the other one LA prime or something um, or LA for both of them. But, but A um, uh, is, is the, uh, what it does is that it's a linear, it's a matrix, but it's also a linear transformation that when you multiply it by elements of Rn, you get elements of Rm. But that's not what I want to do. I want to go from V to W. So what do I do? From V, what I know how, uh, I, I, what I can do is go down to Rn. I can do that by a coordinate map. The coordinate map, you take every element of V and you get an element of Rn. Well, I'm going to do that and then apply A, get a cross over here, and then, how, then I'm going to go back up. And how am I going to go back up? I'm going to go with the inverse of the coordinate map from W to Rm. The coordinate map goes from the vector space to Rn or to Rm. Uh, the one for W goes from W to Rm. But what I want to do is go back up. And so that will be the inverse of that coordinate map. So instead of going straight over, I go down here, over here, and up there, and I'm where I want to be. So I have my map. So what is LA? LA is going to be the composition of all these things. It's going to be L, circle A, circle T. Remember, uh, the, the, the last thing we say is the first thing we do. So L, circle A, circle T is going to be the composition of these linear transformations. That's what is going to be what the LA is going to be. Okay, so, so T is the coordinate map uh, uh, from V to Rn. Again, for a coordinate map, I need to have bases. And L is the inverse of the coordinate map from W to Rm. Um, okay, so, so that's, that's what we want to do. And let, let's do an example to see how that would work. So 
my vector space V is polynomials of degree less than or equal to three. That's what we show by P3R uh, with, with coefficient. The R says the coefficients are for real numbers. And W is this set of two by two matrices. This is a subset of two by two matrices, but it's also uh, it's two by two matrices with real entries, but it's also a vector space in its own right. Um, we, we could show that, and in fact, we can show that by, by coming up with a spanning set, which we will do, but, but you are familiar with these kinds of uh, subsets of other vector spaces being subspaces, and this is a subspace, so it's a vector space itself. And what I want is I want a map from V to W. Now, uh, so I want a linear transformation from V to W, one vector space, another, neither one of them are Rn or Rm, but... Now, given the fact that what we know about isomorphisms, these are not just sort of run-of-the-mill vector spaces. They are isomorphic to some Rn and Rm. And in fact, we know what Rn and Rm. That depends only on their dimension. And we know that if you can find out the dimension of this, this one, we know its dimension is 4, so it's isomorphic to R4. And this one looks like its dimension is 2, and if that's true, then it's isomorphic to R2. So um, we pick a basis for... Uh, uh, P3R, this is a typo here, it should be P3R, polynomials of degree uh, less than or equal to uh, 3. Um, and, um, and I will also want, uh, so, so I, I'm going to uh, try to fix this, 3, yes. Um, and uh, we will also uh, fix a, a, a basis for uh, w. So, so how do we come up with this? Well, we let a be equal one, as we have done in the, in many times in the past, and b equals zero, and we put b equals one and a equals zero, and we get this other term. So, a equals one, b equals zero gives us this. B equals zero, a equals one gives us that. That doesn't always give us a basis, but but um, usually it gives us a spanning set. This is spans w. Why? Well, because if you multiply this by a and we multiply that by b, two scalars, and add them, you get this typical element. And so, so this is a spanning set for W, which along, uh, among other things, it tells us that W is a subspace because it's spanned by a bunch of elements in a, in a vector space. Um, but these two are also linearly independent because this is not, this first one is not the zero vector and the second one is not a linear, uh, a multiple of the first one. And so it's actually a basis, making W a um, uh, two-dimensional um, space. So... Because it's two-dimensional, this is two-dimensional and that's four-dimensional, to go from one to the other, I need a two-by-four matrix. Any two-by-four matrix now uh, will give me a linear transformation from V to W. The two-by-four matrix that I've picked is this one. Its first column is minus one, two, then three minus four, then minus five, six, and then finally the last column, zero minus 13. Okay, so now how do I do this? Well, I say that I used to have, when I saw this matrix, I would say I have this matrix LA that goes from R4 to R2 because this is two by four. And, and what is it? It's the one that you get by multiplying by the matrix. But what I'm telling you now is that I'm gonna be calling that linear transformation A as not to confuse it with the new one that's gonna go from V to W. So A is a linear transformation from R4 to R2, that matrix is, we just multiply by it, by elements of R4 by that matrix, you get something in R2. And, um, and, and this is what it does. You take A and you multiply it by alpha, beta, gamma, delta, um, and you get something in, in R2, and we know that. Now, how are we going to change this to go from V to W? Well, some of it is, is pretty straightforward. If someone gives you something in, in, in V, in, in a polynomial of degree two or less than or equal to three, it would be something like A plus BX plus CX squared plus DX cubed. It's not surprising that we would write that as A, B, C, D. We would just, and, and what that is though, it's the coordinates of that element with respect to the spaces. The thing we get though is in R2, what is that? Well, though that's going to be the coordinate of um, the, what we want in terms of the basis for W. So let's continue that. So this, the, the, uh, what we do have is, is up here. Uh, so V is again polynomials less than or equal to three. W is the subspace of two by two matrices, A is that two by four matrix, and we have picked the basis S um, and a basis B, S for V and B for W, and the order of the basis elements uh, does matter. Um, okay, now, uh, all right, so what are we gonna do now? So I'm gonna draw a little picture for you to, to, to um, uh, tell you what it is. Sometimes the picture makes it sound like it's more complicated than it is, but 
I think uh, overall it's helpful. So I start with some V in V and um, I want to go over to W, but I don't know how to do that. I don't have a map, but I do know how to find the coordinates of that with respect to S. This is the coordinate map sending V to these coordinates with respect to S. If you give me a polynomial in here, like five plus three X cubed, well, I know its coordinate is five, zero, zero, three. That's the coordinate map and it's giving me the coordinates in R4. Okay, then as soon as I have something in R4, the matrix A takes me over to R2. Remember, this is now the linear transformation A, the one that you multiply by this guy and you get something in R2. But what is that thing in R2? Well, um, what did I want to do really? It wasn't really uh, get something in R2. I wanted this linear transformation in LA and I wanted to go over and get what the image of V is in W. I wanted to find out LA of V. But what I, I did instead was found the image of this element of R4 in R2. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to declare that guy the coordinates of LA of V. This thing is not what I want, the thing that I got, because it's in R2. The thing that I want is, 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 should be a matrix. And, and what, I, what I will say is that um, this thing is the coordinates of uh, uh, LA of V with respect to V. So the thing that I got, I started from V, go down here, go over here. This is the coordinates of LA of V, the thing that I wanted with respect to V. And then how do I translate back? Well, I can use the coordinate map. This is the coordinate map from W to R2 um, that uh, takes everything and writes it in terms of its basis. And I can always reverse that. These, these two maps, the, the coordinate maps are isomorphisms and you can translate back. So uh, the point of the matter is that you come, you start from V, you find the coordinate with respect to S, you multiply by S, by A, and that gives you the coordinates of what you want with respect to B. And, L, and, and then you can translate back. And uh, LA is really composition of three maps. Um, the, the coordinate map from uh, V to R4, uh, the, the, the matrix A, or the linear transformation that the matrix A gives, and then um, the coordinate map, the inverse of the coordinate map, map back up to there. So in our example, like for example, let's see what it actually does. So we start with a V, which is a polynomial of degree three or less. So it's something like alpha plus beta X plus gamma X squared plus uh, delta X cubed. Then we find its coordinates with respect to the standard basis, one X X squared X cubed, and that's gonna be alpha, beta, gamma, delta. And um, then we go across using A, we go over to the domain side of things, and we do that by taking this, um, the matrix A and multiplying it by this guy. And, and, we, and, and, and so we do that, and, and uh, we've done that before. So you take the matrix, multiply it by that guy, you get this thing. Now this is, this, the, 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 this is two, uh, two numbers here. So this is an element of R2, and it, this is not the thing that I want. It's not LA of V, but it's the coordinate of LA of, LA of V with respect to B. So, um, and, 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 and so what's LA of v, B? I have to translate this back into W. How do I do that? I use the basis. This is the coordinates of a vector with respect to this basis. What's the vector itself? Well, these are its coordinates. So that means you take this guy times the first basis element, the second entry times the second basis element. And, and you get this. You can multiply these out. I mean, th those things in parentheses are just numbers. They're ugly numbers, but they're numbers. And um, you can just multiply them up and, and add them together, and you get a, a, a matrix, and that is LA of V. So, so, so that is our procedure for finding uh, linear, for linear transformations for any two finite dimensional vector spaces using a basis. So for the record, let's like write down the, 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 the definition uh, sort of clearly. Um, v and W are vector spaces. Dimension of V is N, dimension of W is M. I'm just repeating myself. S and B are ordered bases for V and W respectively. Um, as soon as you have that, and if you want a linear transformation from um, V to W now, then you want an M by N matrix. So if you're given an M by N matrix, you, you not only have a linear transformation from RN to RM, you have a linear transformation from any vector space of dimension N to any vector space of dimension W. And, and, and how is that defined? It's defined by this little um, thing. It tells you that if you if you you take a and multiply it not by v you can't because v is just maybe a polynomial maybe a matrix maybe some other thing that uh, a can't be multiplied by but you take the coordinate of little v 
um, the, the thing you want to send over with respect to the standard basis. And, and then you, that you can multiply by A. And what you get again is not LA of V, but it's the coordinate of LA of V, which is like to B, but then you can translate that. And, and this is the matrix linear transformation from V to W corresponding to A. The, uh, that's right. Now, I'm, I'm done, but, but I, I do want to say that uh, this is, doesn't have to be all reals either. Uh, so for those of you who are, uh, uh, this is your second round true linear algebra, um, the vector, vector spaces can be over any field. They just have to be over the same field. And of course, if that's the, ca the case, like for example, maybe over the complexes, maybe the, when we say over the same field, we mean the scalars are from some field. There's something other than the reals. They could be the complex numbers. They could be the rational numbers. They could be integers mod seven um, or um, uh, some other things, uh, rational functions, for example. Well, but, but, but if that's the case, uh, then, um, then you don't want a matrix with real entries. You also want the entries of the matrix to be from that field. And then the same thing works just properly. Okay. Now, the final thing that I want to say is that it's often helpful to have these what's called commutative diagrams to help you um, uh, see where things are going. Or at least I like to visualize things um, uh, that way. So one way to do that is at the level of vector spaces and maps. So for example, uh, we want to go from V to W, these are vector spaces. Then we go, for, uh, but, but what we do is that we pick a basis S and a basis B for V and W. And that's why when I put those bases up there, and then I use T1, which is a, um, um, the coordinate map with respect to S, and I get something in Fn. I'm doing the general field now. I mean, it could be Rn. Again, first time true, F is always R, uh, is the real numbers. And then I can go across by multiplying by the matrix A, and I get something here. And here from W, I can also come down with a um, uh, coordinate map. And again, T1 and T2 are both isomorphisms. So if you need to, you can go back. And so composing this map, that map, and the inverse of that map gives me LA. And so this is at the level of vector spaces and, um, uh, and the linear transformations of the bases. You can make it a little bit more uh, detailed, maybe a little bit more cluttered, uh, but when you, um, when you look at um, one individual element, see what happens. So, so he, here, you can, you can also write the same diagram in this way. You start with a, a little vectors V in V, you send it over here to its coordinates with respect to S, and, and then you multiply it by the matrix A, and that gives you the coordinates of LA with respect to B, and then you can translate back. Um, and, 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 and the composition of these three maps is going to be LA. So now you know how to find linear transformations um, from, from matrices for any two vector spaces. Now the key thing is gonna come in the next part of this part two, which is that we can actually go back. That's, you know, we simplify things by saying all finite dimensional vector spaces are isomorphic to some Rn or some Fn, but um, uh, now we're gonna simplify things about linear transformations. All linear transformations between finite dimensional vector spaces are matrix transformations. There are no, no other ones. So now we wanna go back from a linear transformation. We wanna get what matrix could have made it, and that's the object of next lesson. So that's the end. And here is a uh, picture of uh, Claremont from Potato Mountain.